All right, welcome everybody. Today's video might be the most important and exciting video I've ever done. You know, sometimes you encounter a thinker or a paradigm or an idea that, that becomes a game changer, meaning that it really transforms the game that you're trying to play. It brings awareness to what you were trying to do and how if you change the approach, it's going to be extremely more powerful. So I've been introduced to Jordan Greenhall only a few days ago by, by Eric Weinstein and I've been consuming all his content since then. And probably the most important video is called The Rivalrous and the Anti-Rivalrous. Even he says that I think that this concept itself, if fully grasped, may be the most important one out there. So that's a mouthful. Let's jump into it and look at it. What is the Rivalrous? The Rivalrous is something that if I have it, you don't. Physical objects, products, natural resources, this kind of thing. The anti-rivalrous is something that is the opposite of that. Something that the more people have it, the better. For example, language, right? If only I speak a language, it doesn't help. Or certain theories like calculus. If I know that many people know it, they will be able to make inventions that help everyone. This kind of thing. Based on these two types of resources, if you will, um, there are two types of games that can be played and he calls them game A and game B. What characterizes the environment of these two games is scarcity versus abundance. Now, what's interesting is that civilization until now has been basically game A. Um, it has tried to distribute the rivalries, what is scarce. And what's exciting but also scary about the current times is that game A is coming to an end. And there are two ways this can come to an end. It basically, civilization can crash and burn or it can flow into this new game, game B. And interestingly, game B is our best bet and our only bet. So how can you personally prepare for this transition? To understand this, we have to move to the personal and understand how, how it feels like to play game A versus game B. And here we can use a Petersonian concept of expediency versus meaning. More precisely, what is the difference between these two modes of being? Mode one is transactional. You do something in order to achieve something else. So you defer the result in the future. What you do is a means to an end. That's the transactional, that's expediency. The alternative is to do something that is intrinsically meaningful. So what you do is itself its own reward. Now to make things concrete, let's look at my situations, how I've approached things in the past and how I'm going to change this from now on. So since the end of my masters, what I've done until now was to divide my time more or less in half and I'm talking about my working time and on one side I had a job and on the other side I had an uh, entrepreneurial activities. I cannot say I've been very successful on the entrepreneurial side but this evaluation is already the result of, a, of the wrong way of looking at things and you will understand in a moment. So what I'm going to do is to remove the entrepreneurial part and replace it with, with something else. Basically the opportunity to practice game B. So my mistake was to try to do these activities outside of my job to get something in return, to either become successful or to earn money from it. And what is generated is a lot of anxiety and depression. Why did I feel this? It was this paradox because I was learning and becoming better at making videos and so on. So I, there was progress that I was making uh, in terms of me becoming more confident in front of a camera and, and learning interesting things and enriching my life as a consequence. And on the other side, I felt scarcity. I felt bad because I thought no one wants to pay me. No one wants to uh, become a client for my coaching. And this is kind of paradoxical because on one hand, this activity was absolutely enriching my life. And on the other hand, I felt that I was wasting my time in some form. And the answer is that I was looking for abundance in the wrong place. And if you think about this again, we were talking about the transactional, right? The transactional is game A. You do something in order to get something else. I was doing videos in order to get enough people interested so that some people would uh, become my clients, coaches and so on. 
But if you think about it, if game B is not about the transactional, then the things that will improve your life will not come as an exchange for things that you do. The things that improve your life will be things that you didn't earn, will, will be things that are just there. And there is the risk that we just, because they are just there, they, we take them for granted. And that's why we kind of are blind to this opportunity and to all the goodness that is already coming from game B. So let's look at my situation. I'm doing these videos, right? Um, and I'm not being paid for them. And so I could complain. But then if you look at it, in reality, what's going on is that I'm using a free platform. YouTube is free, right? I'm not paying YouTube to broadcast my message. So this is completely free and I can reach potentially thousands, if not millions of people. And then I'm building everything on top of free software from the editing software to the browser that I'm using to the operating system. As a software engineer, I'm using basically all open source software. I've paid nothing to get it. And all of this would have been impossible to achieve um, without millions of dollars. Then what else? I have a lot of free or extremely cheap information that I can access. So all websites, blogs, YouTube videos, um, podcasts, plus there are books that are in the public domain or and most valuable books cost almost nothing. Then the next thing that I have is affordable technology. I'm not saying it's free, the camera uh, or the laptop or, or all these kind of little gadgets that I'm using to record are not free, but I was able to pay them something that even 20 years ago would have been impossible. They wouldn't even have existed. That's another privilege. Another thing is education. Obviously that was not free and was a lot of effort, but I had the opportunity to do that. And last but not least, that's uh, the most important thing right now, is I'm in a point in my life where I have the time to do this. And time is the most valuable resource. And so how could I feel a lack of something within this context of abundance. And this is only the stuff that is relevant to the activity that I'm doing. If I started listing all the things that make my life better in general, there would be much, much more. What this points to is a blind spot. It's a lack of gratitude, obviously. And if we look at gratitude as a skill, it's something that I haven't practiced because, because I'm always in this transactional mindset. I'm doing something in order to get something else. And so the things that I get without having done anything for them, I take them for granted, I don't even count them. They don't count. But that's not the future. In the future, we will probably get nothing in return for, for we, things we do. <laughs> that's the thing we have to get used to. But on the other hand, we will be gifted more and more just, just because, just because of the creativity of, of the world. Obviously, there is the alternative that uh, we will crash and burn as a civilization, which is very real, but if there is something that can save us, it's that, it's this, it's game B. So my decision is to use this time that I have as a training ground for game B. And this is why I'm going to change the focus of the channel. I'm not going to do anything anymore to achieve a result. I'm going to do things that are intrinsically meaningful to me. So things that are fun, things that are engaging, things that allow me to learn, things that allow me to become better at articulation, uh, at explaining things with clarity. And this is a skill that can benefit both people who listen to me, but also me because I have a more clear map of the world and then I can enact it and land in a better place. Something that sounds a bit weird, but in reality has been leading a lot of what I've been doing because I've been trying to improve the video quality, the sound quality. And what is it? What is this if not beauty? An attempt to make something be more beautiful. And then finally, and that's something that I cannot control too much, is it's been it's building relationships. And I'm not sure that YouTube is the correct medium to do that. But I've had the opportunity to build a couple of relationships with this channel. And I think that that has been a bit inhibited by my attempt to make a marketing tool out of this. So I hope that through this new approach, this might actually improve. And then finally, something that would be amazing is if I could actually enrich someone's life with what I'm doing. So um, if I could, through the clarity and the, and the concepts that I'm sharing, actually feel that someone's life has been improved. And it's interesting, there is a part of me 
that is not satisfied, that wants to, you know, like be compensated for all that. And I see this as an opportunity to train a new way of being that is not that. As I said, all these things are intrinsically meaningful and to the degree that they are not, I really want to train doing something for the activity itself. And that's basically training game B. And so from now on, I have nothing to sell here. I'm not going to talk about my coaching. I'm not going to pitch. I'm not going to do any marketing. I'm not going to put any, any labels on my name. I'm not a coach. I'm not an engineer. I'm just me. I'm learning and I'm sharing. And so I'm going to share, for example, a little change I did on my channel. Uh, this is, was the header that I had, daily personal development tools crafted with care by Nick Redmark, the Swiss coach engineer. Anyway, anyway, kind of a bad heading because it's way too long. But um, yeah, I, I decided to remove all these labels and basically this is what my channel is about. I am going to learn and share things with you. So one thing that one might ask, is this kind of stupid idealism? Am I giving up on the opportunity of entrepreneurship? Maybe, but then on the other hand, I already have financial security. I, I can just go work and, and live the transactional life. I, can, I, I have the skills, I am an engineer. And I will, as long as the software engineers earn money, I won't have problems surviving. So that, that's not the problem. Why, why am I even mixing these two fields? And another way of looking at it is if you always do things in order to achieve something, when will you cash in, right? When will you actually feel happy? When will you actually have the moment where you can be present and enjoy life? And that's the skill. That's something that needs to be trained. That's game B. So I don't see this as idealism. I see this as a practical spirituality, you know, like focusing on what really matters. And I think it's not stupid because I'm really not just uh, going full hippie and, uh, and, and, and doing a pilgrimage to India, right? I'm still grounded uh, in game A because game A is going to be around for a while. I have my job and, and that's okay. That's fine. But now I, I'm, I can play a full non-polluted game B in this context and see what's going to happen. So basically what we have here is complete freedom to play. And I like, I like this, I like this idea. And I like that you can be part of it if you desire, uh, engage. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to just keep focusing on doing things that are fulfilling to me. If you're interested, then just have a conversation with me. Okay, we can get to know each other. Uh, we can kind of explore things that are interesting to us and who knows what will come out of it. That's it. Thank you for watching. Bye.